Michiganders can be a superstitious bunch. We find all sorts of reasons to explain the world around us, sometimes pulling from science, sometimes tradition, and sometimes from our imaginations. What happens when we can't readily explain our experiences? And what happens when a ghost story gets out of hand? Do these legends stem entirely from fantasy? Or are people seeing things no one can truly explain? Michigan is a water-centric state. Not only are we two peninsulas surrounded on most sides by the Great Lakes, but we have smaller lakes, rivers, creeks, channels, and all manner of other sources of water. A drive along any highway will reveal ponds, ditches, and potholes full of it. But when you have all that water and a population needing to travel, what do you do? You build bridges. And for a long time, many of those bridges were covered one-lane deals. But they did the job, and people were, and still are, able to carry on their lives more easily. But as it turns out, bridges can also be places of tragedy, of injury and death, of revenge and hatred, and all of that can lead to some very interesting and unexplainable phenomena. There are dozens, if not a hundred, stories about strange things happening around the bridges of Michigan. We don't have quite the time to cover all of them, but we'd like to talk about the more significant stories and the people's experiences around these bridges. Back in September, we had the opportunity to take a little trip over to the Denton Bridge in Canton, supposedly the site of the death of a young woman and her baby. The woman had been caught cheating, and her husband took out his anger by killing her, her lover, and the baby with an axe. Sounds a little familiar? In our last episode, we talked about the Ada Witch, a famous local legend in Ada, Michigan. The stories are similar, cheating wives, rage-filled husbands, and death leading to ghostly specters, and some experiences people have had around the bridge are just as similar. There's an apparition of a woman who walks the bridge wearing blue and with a ghostly glow about her. There are lights floating around the bridge as well. Some speculate it's the lantern the woman held when she died. There have also been reports of people hearing a baby crying and tiny footprints showing up in the area. Apparently, people used to actually park their cars near the bridge and wait for the spook lights to appear. Those legend seems to have been around for decades, at least according to ChristinaScarcelli.com, beginning in the late 19th century when the community was farms and not housing. It is true, or at least widely known, that in the 1960s, students from Eastern Michigan University, what up, I went there, would prank people by hiding and crying like babies, swinging lanterns back and forth at passing drivers in the dark, and sending fraternity pledges into the woods and river to find their way back with just a light and a fishing pole. Yeah, you know, like you do. We drove past the bridge about four times and took video. But we'll be honest, if there's anything spooky there, it has a lot to contend with. Uh, the neighborhood has been built up a lot to the point that the bridge seems more like a footnote in the landscape rather than a prominent feature. We drove around on a Saturday night, and at 9.30, the place was full of cars. We didn't find anywhere safe to turn off and park. And even if we had, we're pretty sure all we would have found were headlights and taillights. Yeah, it was wonderfully uneventful. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, this is a bridge. <laughs> I was like, oh, here we come up on the bridge. Oh, we're done. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, okay. Never mind. I did see a light, though. Yes, you did. I did. It's a... Some people said you could see green lights, and I found a green light. Some guy had a green light at the back of his yard. Strangely placed. I wonder if it was because of the legend. Though it should be actually kind of hilarious if that's... he was like, ah, let's <laughs> let's trick these children coming here. Oh, that's exactly what I would do. Like, 100%. Oh, I my backyard butts up against a bridge that has ghost lights. Oh, I'm putting so many lights in my yard. I am just covering. <laughs> I am going to put uh, the figure of the blue lady everything. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Uh, well, a little di a little digging into the death records of the area turned up nothing. We looked for any two people dying on the same day in the area at the time the reported story took place, but there's just not a lot there. What we did find, however, were some disturbing stories about other murders that happened in or near Canton. Yeah, for being such a small town, Canton has kind of a sad history. What's up with it? I I'm so surprised. <laughs> I picked, like, there are two, I feel, notable ones. Yeah. 
Um, at the time that we're talking, there was, oh, what was his name? Richard? Mr. Richard, I believe. The man that was killed in this cabin. Oh. This one was kind of a strange case. 1898. Oh, this one's, yeah, the really far back one. Yeah, 1898. James Richard was murdered in his home on January 31st. It says of last year, so maybe 1897 is when he died. And some men entered his home and murdered him for some money, basically. They were not convicted for some reason, even though it seems like pretty common knowledge that they did it. Uh, a woman, before they were arrested, had a dream. Dreams are going to be a common thing in Canton. <laughs> um, it's a very dreamy place. Really not. There's an Ikea. That's pretty there, dreamy that's to true. me. There's an Ikea. <laughs> the only one in Michigan, I believe. It is. Yeah, this woman, who I, I don't think is named, she's in a previous article, had a dream that she was in the woods outside of some cabin and she saw some men force their way in. And I don't know if she saw the murder in her dream or what, but she told the police... And somehow these guys were identified and the police picked them up. Whether it was a result of the dream or not, the newspaper kind of jokes that it was. Mm -hmm. But it seemed pretty common. Everybody's like, yeah, they totally did it. And somehow they got away with it. And I don't know how. I've, I haven't found that in the newspaper articles, how they got away with this. Because everything says that like they did it. And a woman on her deathbed, though it turned out to not actually be her deathbed, she thought she was dying. She was not, in fact, dying. Um, but she said she couldn't go to the grave with this. Her name is Lizzie Finch. And uh, the article I found is called A Late Confession. Lizzie Finch talks about the Richards murder, makes an affidavit. Um, and she says that, yeah, these three guys totally did it. They confessed to her father or something in their kitchen. But by then, I mean, the, the trial was over and they had not been convicted. So they right. can't go back and convict them. Yeah, so these guys got away with murder. I don't remember. Like, I do remember reading the article. I don't remember if this was like a kind of local justice thing. Was the guy that was murdered guilty of anything like did he i don't believe so just piss somebody off the guys that did it it sounds like they were not not great people well no they <laughs> um, killed a guy <laughs> like they were they would go around with guns and threaten people and, oh okay and things maybe that's why um, there was no because that's why lizzie waited until her deathbed to make the confession is because she was afraid of them oh for sure she was gonna die anyway so we yeah. might as well give them she... up except that she didn't die yeah, and then she didn't die. She recovered. I'm assuming they did not then kill her. I think we would have found that article, too. Yeah. <laughs> I have, in this article is from June 28, 1990, written by Diane Gale in the Canton Observer, wrote an article about all of the different murders that had happened or that had, you know, that had happened recently to the time that this article came out called Grizzly Murders Thrust Township in Spotlight. So here is a small breakdown. She has bullet pointed the four different murders that she will be talking about in this article. So here's a quick breakdown. A young woman who finds her mother stuffed in the family freezer. Yep, that was the other one I found. A Fulbright scholar who uses duct tape to suffocate his wife and then stages a robbery to cover up the killing. Wow. A 54-year-old man who shoots his estranged wife with a 30-30 rifle, goes to a local tavern, orders two beers, and calls the police to report the murder. Wow. And two teenage boys who take a 13-year-old Canton girl to a wooded area and shoot her seven times because one of them thought he got her pregnant. Wow. That's really horrible. And there were others that I had found, too, that I, I couldn't get enough info on. Yeah. But the, the one about the girl finding her mother in the freezer, that yeah. was 1985 is when they found her, but she'd been missing for a few years at that point. Yes. What was the guy? Tybersky. Leonard Tybersky was the killer's name. It was her father. And this woman had been having dreams about her mother being locked away where she couldn't escape, that kind of thing. And, and they were kind of traumatizing her. I believe she was in high school. Maybe she graduated. And she couldn't figure it out. And then she remembered, oh, there's this freezer in our basement that's been locked for years. And we used to use it. And we stopped using it about the time my mom disappeared. And so she, I don't know if she got it open or if she called the police, but... Yeah, sure enough, they opened it up and there was her mom's body. Yeah. So again, a dream led to this murder being uncovered. Yeah. And then when Tybersky testified, he said, I didn't mean any disrespect to my wife's body. I knew no more harm could come to her where she was. So uh, the article says he suspected she had an affair with their daughter's 18-year-old boyfriend. Oh. And that's why he murdered her and stuffed her in a freezer. 
Well, I this one says they had argued. This I'm actually reading one from the New York Times. So oh. this was big news. Yeah. This was very big news. So what's up, Canton? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's such a small town. It's it's built up quite a bit now. It's mostly just sprawl. It's suburban sprawl. It is. And even that I've seen develop, and I've only lived in Belleville for three years, I think, and it had changed since I started living out here. It changed a lot um, since our time in Belleville when it was, yeah, well, yeah. we don't really have anywhere to go or anywhere to hang out. I guess we'll stay at the apartment, too. Yeah, that, wow, this is... That whole area, yeah. There's restaurants and there's, you know... Yeah, a lot more stores. A lot more stores. There's actually places um, to shop in Belleville now that aren't Meyer. Yeah, Van Buren Township is crazy built up. And Canton is, has been slowly spreading yeah. further and further out. Um, it's always been a bit rural, sprawlish. People with money yeah. m- moving out to the country. I had a friend who went to Plymouth Canton High School. It was a conjoined high school and it's huge. Yeah, so for it to have so many stories, I was really surprised. I was very surprised. I was really surprised. Anyway, so we went to the bridge. We I we even filmed it from the car. I did. We've I filmed. I did my diligence. Yeah, tried to find any evidence of these murders happening, and we got nothing. The it, river's barely even there. It's like oh, it's, it's a ditch. Yeah, it's just a ditch at this point. It feels like all we do is debunk on this show. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, unfortunately, a lot of urban legends are just that. Yeah. They're fun stories, but they're just stories. Yeah. Scary stories to tell in the dark. That kind of thing. I mean, we did uncover some pretty horrific true stories. I mean, yeah. I, mean, I, I don't even think for Canton you need to make up any urban legends. You have, you have enough, Canton. You, <laughs> you have don't enough. need more. I mean, my God, that... Poor girl dreaming about her mother being trapped. Awful. And then to find that she, her, her body had been stuffed in the freezer in their basement. That's chilling. Like that, ooh, that gives me chills. I don't, I don't like that story. But we promise that's not all there is to the show. We're not just going to sit here and no. debunk all the, all the legends and all the ghost stories that you like best. Because regardless of what the sto- have, if the story is true or not, stuff is happening. Or at least happened. Yes. People have people saw things. I don't think I'm going to put that in the present tense, but people saw things. Yes. The next legend, however, has a lot of elements that we'd like to really get into. In this vicinity, a bizarrely, very bizarrely well-documented legend has it that an Italian-American girl named Anna Rhodes Millerton, nay Anna Rhodes Fazio, moved in with her aunt Stella Rhodes in Saginaw after her father went crazy in Italy and burned down their house and most of the family, including himself, with it in 1816. Which is nuts. <laughs> and all they say is, oh, he just went crazy. Like, what? what? <laughs> no, that's all we get. Um, she made friends with, according to the source we have, the local Sauk tribe. But I don't think that's accurate because the Sauks were very likely not living there at the time, if they even ever did live there. They were more Wisconsin, Illinois just kind of further west of here. So it was more likely if at this time it would have been the Huron Mm -hmm. living in that area. That's just my own research living in Michigan. But she especially got close to a boy. The story names Dark Hawk. I'm going to talk about that in a bit. (laughs) And she played with him in the clearing that later became the Dice Road Cemetery. Yay, another cemetery. And at the time was where the tribe buried their dead. Yeah, so this is the Dice Road Cemetery. Uh, bridge and cemetery. Yes, which are close together. They're basically just, they're kind of attached. After growing up amid rising hostilities between the local tribe and incoming lumbermen, Anna married a lumberman named Jonathan Millerton in 1828, which made Dark Hawk feel betrayed as he had wanted to marry her. Anna's aunt had passed away and her new husband was soon taken away on business. Anna slowly lost her mind mind in her loneliness and supposedly Dark Hawk came often to assault her I have written down pause to be horrified because what the hell? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, this whole story. I have issues with this story. Yeah. Uh, when Anna heard that Jonathan's ship had sunk and believing that he had drowned, she hanged herself in a small shed that was later turned into an outhouse at the back of the cemetery. Also terrible. Yeah. What the heck? Uh, her spirit is said to protect the shed, uh, which is why it has not been torn down. Anna's journals were found in the walls of the shed. Jonathan had not, in fact, died and was devastated to return to find his wife dead from suicide. 
He claimed that he saw her ghost by the shed and was shunned for his his crazy talk. This piece of the story happens in Dice Road Cemetery, but just next do- next door is the bridge. And that legend says that a warlock who lived near the bridge lost his wife. He buried her in his front yard. Three teenage girls unknowingly desecrated her grave and the warlock hanged all three from the bridge. And if that wasn't enough of a story, it's also said that Satanists used to worship around the bridge led by a man named Crazy Larry. That's a great name for our cult leader, isn't it? Oh, so good. That's the guy you want to be following. Come on down to Dice Road Bridge. We've got cemeteries. We've got Satanism. We've got another white lady. (laughs) These women are all over Michigan. Oh, so many. I've got my theory on that, though. It's the the Victorian ladies. They finally get to walk alone at night, unescorted. I mean, they're living it up. No, that sounds great. Yeah. I can't wait. So doing some digging on find a grave and family search, I couldn't find any Millertons in Michigan at all, much less than Anna or Jonathan. Searching for Anna Rose and Anna Fazio also returned nothing. But I did find a Stella Rose. She was buried on the other side of the state near Traverse City. This doesn't mean that there isn't any Millerton buried in Michigan, just that the information is not readily available. And if Anna did hang herself, would she have been buried there anyway? I don't know. Yeah, no, there were no there were no Millertons. It took me I couldn't find any Millertons really anywhere. I don't think that's a yeah. last name. <laughs> I mean I'm sure it's a last name. I'm sure it's a last name, but not available not, to find on any Not common? No. Yeah, I couldn't find anything on this this anna no um, it's such a detailed story and it's very prejudiced <laughs> like it's very prejudiced against dark hawk which so on dark hawk i don't buy this story based on his name alone <laughs> just because there was the black hawk war which was the sock tribe yes against the united states for a few months back in 1830 something and dark hawk bears a striking resemblance to black hawk and they're both supposed to be socks. So mm-hmm. I, I'm not. No, <laughs> no, no. Um, I, I don't know where this story came from, but somebody was like, oh, what was that guy's name in the war? Something dark hawk something. Yeah, sure. Hey. That sounds great. Yeah. You mentioned the sock people not even really living here in Michigan. No, um, they were in the Great Lakes region for sure. They're more west of here. They did slowly move west as the Huron moved in. And sort of pushed them. Um, and that that would have been in like the 1700s. If they were here at all, it would have been in the 1700s. Longer and, ago than this story could have taken place. Yes. And our main source for that is, I believe, Champlain, who was never even in Michigan. They do say that Saginaw, which is kind of where this story takes place, yeah, is, um, I believe it's Ojibwe for where the socks lived, kind of <laughs> like sock land. But that's just kind of what people say now. Even that's kind of being called into question because historians are more and more thinking they didn't actually live here. So they may have before the Huron because they seem to have steadily been moving west from about, well, since America started. Mm -hmm. And a little before because of the French traders too. Right. Because the Huron moved in and the Ojibwe and and the Council of the Seven Fires, I forget. They moved in in the like 1400s and then the French came in the 1600s. So the Sox have been steadily moving westward since then so did they live here possibly did they live here in the 18 early 1800s very unlikely yeah but on that same vein so dark hawk i got a problem with this just in the uh they're making him that kind of well at first he's like the quote-unquote like gentle savage right and then he turns into the savage savage yeah he completely turns on her and and they're using Native American stereotypes. Yeah. So supposedly Anna's journals exist, which if this were, if these were actual journals, which I highly suspect they are not, (laughs) um, (laughs) if they were, if she was retelling a truthful story about what happened in her life, I don't think that she would so readily write Dark Hawk in this fashion. And if she was writing these as a story... Like, if the journals still exist, but the story itself is untrue, then I totally buy the way that Dark Hawk is written. Because it would be from 18-something. What did we say? 1828? Yeah, 1828. That kind of um, instilled racism makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But in general, if this story is just made up entirely, I got a problem with it. (laughs) Oh, uh, yeah. 
I have several problems with um, it. <laughs> and speaking of the journals... And ReviewMag.com, where we got a lot of the information on the Dice Road Cemetery and Bridge, it says that the Michigan Historical Research Foundation for Paranormal Activity, MHRFPA, obtained pages of Anna's journal in the late 1800s. The organization, as it is titled here, doesn't really exist anymore. These journals were apparently released in 1971. The local police department, after hauntings of the area on Dice Road, were reported. That's so long after this event and these supposed journals surfaced that I <laughs> I have problems with this. Yeah. Okay. If this story is true and like they're actual like journals and Anna wasn't just Anna if she existed as the story tells her wasn't just writing a story because she was bored. Right. Waiting for her husband to come back. Well, and there's a lot of accusations of insanity. Which also yeah. kind of raises some red flags for me. Because that's it's very easy to be like, oh, he's crazy. It's like, well, yeah, but what does that mean he was crazy? That And they, they did kind of throw that around a lot back then. They did view words like that differently than we do now. But, you know, she went crazy from loneliness. Like, well, she was just lonely. <laughs> right. Is it because she's a woman in yeah, the I early like 1800s? Is they're that... very ready to throw hysterics at her. Yeah. <laughs> And the whole tragic of like, oh, I think my loved one is dead. I'm going to kill myself. And then he comes back. It's very Romeo and Juliet. It is. And then uh, Review Mag also has excerpts from the from the journals. Ooh. Which I did. I did, I did air quotes. Yeah. The journals that read like fiction. They don't read like I would think someone writing at the period would sound. Mm. You know, this is me coming from a yeah. 2019 perspective, putting all the literature I've read from the well, 1800s back on it. But yeah, because I'm thinking like, yeah, things from that time period, people spoke differently than we do. And it just but diaries, seem... they tended to be really plain. They weren't very narrative yeah. often. So it starts in October 8th, age of 29, with Anna writing to Jonathan about how she doesn't care about Darkhawk. She cares about him and how he come and how Darkhawk comes to her when he's away. Yeah, this just sounds like a gothic novel. It does. It's kind of like reading through the review mag excerpts was kind of like reading dracula <laughs> yeah i get yeah essentially it was just just letters from mina yeah i mean history is, is full of very fascinating stories I mean, we've covered a couple now but i just i don't buy this one i don't i'm sorry i just don't buy this one i know and i really want to because it's, it's, it's i mean it's quite the a story it's quite the tale it is um i'm not gonna say it's necessarily a good story in that it's Oh, this is a great story. What good people! No, like, it's a tragedy. Yes, it, it's but it's a it's a gothic romance, is what it is. And in, in that sense, it is a good story. But it's a story. We need to find something that's true. I'm working on it. <laughs> we really need to find something that's true. <laughs> more and more research I do, the more and more things get debunked. Funny how that works. Crazy when you do research. Wow. All right. Regardless, people have been witnessing strange things happening for decades. And we'll get into that in a moment. But to not to not only have the journal supposedly that recounts this woman's amazing and tragic life and the story be filled with savage natives, the burial grounds, false shipwrecks, and hangings, it sounds like a novel. Yep. It just does. Yeah. I mean, like I said, if this story really did happen, you know, what an incredible story. It's not bad. Uh, it's a shame that we haven't found the real Anna and Darkhawk and Jonathan somewhere out there if they exist. I, I guess it means that we'll have to uh, take a trip to the cemetery and bridge ourselves. I would love to go out there and see what's going on because there are a lot of stories around this area. There's so much. Yeah. Yeah. Road trip. Mini road trip because it's not. Uh, it's not terribly, terribly far. far. Yeah. <laughs> we can do it. <laughs> All right. So that gets us to the warlock. Talk about sensational stories. I love this one. I was so excited because it's a man. Yeah. He's a warlock. Yeah. Uh, but where did this guy come from? <laughs> so as we said earlier, the tale of the warlock goes that his wife died and he buried her in his front yard. Three teenagers accidentally walked all over her and he hanged them from Dice Road Bridge as punishment. Another version from a commenter over on Review Mag has it that the warlock, warlock was burned for his crimes. Um, and I had also read, that, uh, and I forget where, that it was the warlock that was hung in the bridge. So... Who knows? <laughs> Everybody. Yeah. Who knows who died and how many of them? He hanged the girls it's and just... then he hanged himself. 
yeah, it was just a big ol' hanging party. Uh, so much like the witches in the previous episode, can we all agree that there weren't warlocks, as all these legends would have you believe? Though he, he does stand alone as a, um, the lone man. He does! There Good are a job. lot of witch stories. This is the only warlock one that I've come across. We want to say outright that this doesn't negate or dis- discount any of the experiences people have had in Dice Road Cemetery or on or around this bridge, just that sometimes stories are just that fiction. But if that's the case, then how did all of this start? Well, cemeteries seem to have a habit of being haunted. And really, why wouldn't they be? They're full of the dead, and if you ascribe to the belief that dying in certain ways or leaving something undone in the mortal realm will lead to hauntings, then it stands that all cemeteries will have their fair share of ghosts. So let's get into what people have witnessed in the area. Well, there's the lady in white, whom I think we assume is supposed to be Anna. Yeah, that's what all the stories say. Oh, I saw Anna. Yeah, they call her Anna. She's been seen floating around the cemetery by a number of people. Disembodied voices, both male and female, have been heard late at night. Uh, Shadowlands says visions of objects moving and things such as ropes have been witnessed. But does that mean when you go out there you see actual objects moving or do you have visions of things moving around? Yeah, I'm very confused about that. Yeah. It was like, okay, is this a physical thing or physical or ethereal thing that you're seeing with your physical eyes in front of you? Or is this like you're having visions in your own head and other people can't see what you're seeing? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't... I don't know. I hate it when they say visions of. It's like... What does that mean? Yeah. So, yeah, another white lady. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Another white lady. <laughs> Looking for something. There have been sightings of the warlock. You can hear the screams of the girls. Uh, different odd voices that seem to be coming from right next to you. in a phantom car at the bridge. I'm interested in... Oh, that's right. Yeah. It's that another, story. It's another phantom car story. Yeah. And ghost lights are seen bobbing in the cemetery, which seems pretty regular for Yeah, it seems pretty cemeteries. common for cemeteries. I don't know about that car, though, because there's nothing... There's no legend connected to it. No. About no. cars, unless no. unless those Satanist kids. Yeah, Crazy Larry. Yeah, who's Crazy Larry? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who is that? Um, If you are from the area and yeah. have heard of a Crazy Larry, he decided to not have his presence ever on the <laughs> internet so it'd be great yeah. to have. <laughs> the car thing is a really common one where you see are you supposed to do something to make the car appear or does it just appear i think it just appears i think it's because okay. sometimes you have to do something to make it appear yeah i think it's but... just a phantom car on the bridge and this this is a one lane bridge right i believe so i believe it it's is, very small according to google maps yeah honestly a lot of country bridges are very small um, a lot. So on uh, again on Review Mag, there are a couple of people who gave their uh, sighting testimonies, and a lot of people say there's just a feeling of evil. Okay, hence warlock, right? And Satanists, even though yeah. that's not what Satanists do. No, Satanists I... sit in their apartments, smoke pot, and like watch movies. Like that's all I Satanists mean, do. Sometimes they do the mass, but. That's only the more motivated ones. Look, this is like a Christmas and Easter thing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the Satanists have, I know are just really chill they people. Have lodges. Yeah, I hate it when they say Satanists. Like, just say like demonic. That's way more what you're going for. Right, or just like devil worshiper, like someone who actually. Yeah, e- evil demons. Yeah. Yeah, but Satanism is a. Would you call it a religion? It is a religion. Okay. Yep. Just want to make sure I'm getting my terminology right. Yeah. And yeah, yeah no, they're just is, chill people. I believe they're a registered um, religion with the state. Excellent. So, yeah. Good job, guys. I mean, a lot of the terminology that people use, I, <laughs> like which. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of things saying that it's the, there's definitely a, like a white lady or a lady in blue. And she's seen in the cemetery, correct? Yes. So she wanders the cemetery. Okay. And then. Earlier we said that she was protecting the shed and that's why it hadn't been torn down. But I can't confirm or deny whether or not there is a shed at the back of that cemetery. Right. Yeah, we haven't been there. So who knows? And also the transformation from, was it outhouse to shed? Yeah. Is, no. They, shed to outhouse, the opposite. Shed to outhouse, okay. Yeah, what? No. No, I don't think they're going to do that. Why would you ruin a perfectly good shed? Just build an outhouse. Yeah. Why would you put an outhouse in a cemetery? Well, I mean, people might need it. Huh. Seems weird. Well, you just dig a hole and then, like... I mean, 
put a building around it. Yeah, and that house isn't really a complicated <laughs> piece of building here. Maybe there's a caretaker. I don't know. I guess we're going to have to go. Yeah. It's pretty, I don't want to say deserted, but there's not a lot out there. There didn't look to be much there. Yeah, there's not much out there. Which is fine. All I need is a cemetery and a bridge, and I'm happy. Yep. And I guess some ghosts. <laughs> and I guess a warlock. <laughs> I want to see the warlock. I want the warlock. Do you think we could contact him? (laughs) Hey there, warlock. It's your boy. Do we have anything else to say about this one? Should we move? I don't think so. Um, I think we both agree that the story is probably made up. Yeah, I I think all of these stories are made up. Yeah, but for some reason, well, it's a cemetery, so it's haunted. But for some other reason, it's haunted. That people have experiences there, and yeah, we can't deny those. So yeah. I don't know if they're, you know, the spirits of the dead, a recording of some kind, energy. Maybe everyone's just retelling this story over and over again. They've manifested this spirit. Who knows? Who knows? But, you know, check out Dice Road Cemetery. Yep. All right. The last major legend we'd like to talk about tonight comes from the same region as the Ada Witch, just a little further up 131, north of Grand Rapids. There's a bridge there over the Rogue River that I kept misspelling as the Rouge River, which is in Detroit, called Hell's Bridge. Legend has it that this is the site where Elias Frisk murdered a town's children. Haunted Bridges by Rich Newman has it this way. Before the city of Algoma Township existed, the local town was called Rockford. This tale takes place during that period. It's said that the local parish was meeting in a church to discuss a missing child when a search party was formed to look for him or her. The remaining children were left at the church under the care of one Elias Frisk. He promptly guided all the kids to Rogue River and killed them. When everyone returned to the church and found the children gone, they promptly set out for Elias. They found him close to the river along with their dead offspring and promptly decided to hang him. Of course, Frisk claimed that he was possessed by the devil when he did the terrible deed, but that did not dissuade the parishioners from stringing him up. Where do we even begin? (laughs) And this is one of those stories. That's a tame version of this story. I didn't write in the like, graphic version because... Yeah, it's horrific. And this is me talking. Yes. <laughs> Things don't generally bother me. And that was like, okay, whoa, hold on here. It was like every horrific thing you can put in a story, they put in that story. Yes. And it's all done to children. Yeah. It's... Ugh. I intentionally didn't include those details. Yeah. And I chose Rich Newman's passage on it because it was the more tame version. And you get the gist of it. Yes. He took a bunch of kids to the river and killed them. Good enough. That's right. If you want to know the details, I believe they're in Ebrils or Bray's? Um, Nicole Bray Bray's has, has a more detailed version. And yeah. it's, it's out there. You can Google it and you'll find it. And it's. Just, yeah, it's one of those just really gross horror stories. Why yeah. has no one made a horror film out of this? Like, it's, I don't know. You could. Easily. It's got demon possession and everything. Well, there are plenty of frisks in Kent County, but none of them seem to have ever been Elias. Not to mention there haven't been any um child murders in the area. Not, not like that. At least that we could find through various newspapers and Google searches. And that would have been... Big news for an entire town's children to have died. Oh, yeah. According to Nicole Bray, whom we mentioned just a bit ago, which, by the way, we'll be using her book a lot over the course of this podcast. And if you haven't picked it up, do. It's a great read. Goes even further into legends than we will. And it has pictures. According to Nicole Bray, who spoke to a cousin of the Frisk family, no one has ever gone by Elias and no one has ever committed murder that they know of. And the Frisk family has gotten pretty tired of their name being connected with a child killer. And who wouldn't be? Yeah. Okay, we also have to talk about the bridge itself. We haven't been to see it for ourselves. We're putting that out there now. But all the photos we've seen of this bridge have something to be desired. Yeah. It's this little metal footbridge that goes over Cedar Creek, not the Rogue River. And it's, well, dinky. Yeah, dinky. It's just feet above the little creek and wouldn't be a good spot to hang anyone. Of course, that's not the original bridge, but it's hard to imagine anything noteworthy crossing over the creek. However, just a little ways down and actually over the Rogue River, the remains of what could have been a much larger bridge um, are there. Bray thinks this could be the bridge where the legend comes from, and that seems likely to us as well. However, 
as usual, the legitimacy of the urban legend often has very little to do with what people are witnessing, and the same is true here. It seems that no matter which bridge you go to, there's something spookity happening. Though I hesitate to discount the voices heard of adults and children, the images of the murderer standing on the bridge. Let's get to the sightings. This bridge is everywhere on the internet, by the way. And oh, this is such a famous story. It exists in um, the book Weird Michigan. It is. It's everywhere. Yeah. That's and it's I've, nuts. We had to talk about this bridge. Is yes. like, it's almost more famous than the Mackinac Bridge. I feel like this this is the most famous haunted bridge in Michigan. Probably. And it's so anticlimactic with the little metal footbridge. <laughs> right. You build this giant bridge. Like, before I had looked at any pictures and we were doing this research, you know, I opened up Weird Michigan. I was like, cool, this is in here. Went to the page, looked down. That's not even a bridge. Yeah, no. No, it's no. I wouldn't call it a bridge. Or a river. Because it's not. It's a creek. Yeah. I do not know why people think this is Hell's Bridge. Probably because it's the only one there. I don't know. Yeah. But there's stuff going on there. Activity includes the sounds of children screaming, which gives credence to the legend. Yeah. Uh, Disembodied, like, moans and groans. And some people say they have seen the image of Elias standing on the bank or the bridge. So they've seen some kind of apparition. And I can see, if if that's the kind of activity you're getting, I can see someone coming up with a... Oh, maybe the guy that we saw killed these kids. And yeah. then, you know, from there, you just, things get added on. People add gruesome details, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Super gruesome details. <laughs> yeah. Like, a lot of these stories, I feel like, probably grew out of what people are experiencing. And then they're searching for a reason. And some enterprising storyteller says, aha, I've got a good one for you. Right. Ghost Village says, it is said that if you are sitting or standing on the bridge at midnight, you can hear the devil laughing. Sometimes you can also hear the children crying or the noise of splashing water where their bodies were thrown. Um, some fishermen in the early morning have reported seeing a strange figure near the bridge. Ghostvillage.com. How do you know what the devil sounds like? I don't know. I guess we'll have to go to the bridge and find oh out. Oh my god, I'm going to go find out what the devil sounds like. Then I'm going to challenge him to a, <laughs> a violin showdown. I wonder if, and I don't know what would have happened here, but I wonder if the people were seeing like ghost children or hearing children and that's how the legend sprang up they hear crying or they hear screaming or splashing of what they think you know is a child or maybe they even see uh, michigan's other side says witnesses have claimed to see children floating in the water below the bridge i'm yeah. assuming that means underneath the water and not just like there's kids playing in the in the creek i wonder if people are seeing those things and then think oh children must have died here yeah and that's where the story comes from. Because I've seen a number of pictures of this bridge. And there's one that someone took as he was walking out there. But he was doing it in the middle of the night because he wanted to be there at midnight. Of course. So the pictures that he took, it's very hard to tell how big this body of water actually is. Yeah. It doesn't seem much. So if that's literally where they're seeing the, the bodies in the water, it must be very crowded. Or if this was indeed in the Rogue River and this bridge that's no longer there and that's where they were seeing them there seems to be a lot of discrepancy where exactly are people seeing hearing these things well right because there are there's what could be the foundations of a really old bridge mm-hmm. on the rogue river just down the creek basically from where this footbridge is yeah and from the sources that i found it sounds like you can have paranormal experiences at either so if you go to the place where those foundations are you might experience something as well and my thinking is that that is the actual bridge, but it's so long gone that ideas and stories just shifted down the creek. Right. Someone found, oh, this must be the bridge. I found the bridge. It's like, well, no, you found a bridge. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to think, like, what are some other things you might hear that sound like children? Like peacocks is one, but we don't really have peacocks in Michigan. Yeah. Unless you're by the zoo. Foxes. Scream. That's true. Foxes. And we do have a lot of foxes. Um, this, again, is it's out in the country. It's not the city. Seeing things in the water, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, I pulled up pictures of it on Google. And it, the, the creek is definitely not deep enough. For, like, a person to be down there or a child to be down there floating? Probably not. Certainly not to be hanged if this was the height of the original bridge. But it's it looks wide enough. Again, these are just pictures. But it looks wide enough that I would count that. Like, it's, you know... 
people from Michigan obviously would probably count that as a creek. I count that as a river because it's water <laughs> flowing on the ground freely. Um, that didn't come from a hose. It's weird. Silly California. I know. What is water? <laughs> what? I don't know. Some, but something may have happened here. I don't think anybody was hanged from this bridge and there's no frisks that they know of that have ever committed child murder. This would have made the news. Yeah. I mean, this would have made national news. Yeah. Easily at <laughs> this time. Like, no, this is this did not happen. Guy murders entire town's children. We would have known about that. Oh, yeah. In a heartbeat. Even, you know, here in the wilds of Michigan. So I, I whether the story gave rise to the phenomena or vice versa, I kind of think vice versa. I think there is stuff happening here and then the story came about. I think so, too. But what that is, I have no idea. Whether it's foxes or shadow uh, people. Shadow people or, yeah, you I'd... know, some children did unfortunately die here through some yeah. circumstances that, you know, when it was just a one lane bridge. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know what's going on here. Accidental deaths and things wouldn't have been reported in like a newspaper, really. No, probably not. So who knows? But I would like to go. Yeah. I don't know if I'm willing to stand out there at midnight just because it's not the paranormal I'm afraid of. It's like real people. Yeah. And then they do caution you that on a lot of sites when there's ever anything that says, oh, go stand out there at midnight or 3 a.m. or something. They always caution you, like, be very careful, be very safe. There are real people out there, too, that maybe wish you some harm. Especially when they know that people are coming out because it's a... Yeah. It's a paranormal hotspot and people are going out there to get scared or find whatever it was that used to happen. I'm, I'm sure it still does. And outside Pasadena, California, near where I grew up, there's the Haunted Woods right underneath like an old torn down asylum, which granted is pretty creepy. But like it's also where a bunch of gangs and a bunch of druggies hang out and they know that kids go up there right, seeking be, ghosts and yeah. not only scare them, but rob them and things like that. So, yep. Always be careful. All right, moving on from here. There are about a thousand other bridges in Michigan we could talk about, but we wouldn't have time for anything else on this podcast if we did. So we're going to go through a few of the other legends quickly, just kind of put the legends out there. You guys decide. Yeah. Do the research for yourself. We've already done it. What do you think's going on? Yeah. And then we'll just talk a little bit about why bridges. Bridges are a pretty big motif. Uh, well, of course, there's the most famous... Maybe second most famous bridge in Michigan, the Mackinac yeah. Bridge. Supposedly, or is this true, that several people died during the construction? That's what I've heard. And I have read this in several different places. Yeah. Um, and also, just building something of that side, if nobody died, I would be surprised. Right. It would be a miracle that thing yeah. is huge and over really dangerous water. Yes. Absolutely. And supposedly, a baby is heard crying on that bridge. Yeah, a lot of babies crying on bridges. Yeah. Which makes me wonder, like, what are they hearing? Because there is absolutely no evidence of a baby having perished on the bridge. Yeah. Or near the bridge or over the bridge or in the water beneath the bridge. It's just... I, I wouldn't think you would hear it from the water because that bridge is really high up. Yes, it's very high up. Um, It's a little bit terrifying. It's it's a large bridge. It's like, a very large bridge. So when I... <laughs> the first time I saw the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco after I was visiting friends and I hadn't moved there yet... And I looked at the Golden Gate Bridge and I said, that's it? <laughs> it was so underwhelming. <laughs> and, the, and of course, my friends, I had flown in and they were like, oh, I'll give you a quick tour of the city. And we drove um, by the bridge. We didn't go across it because it cost money. And I was just like, it's a toy. <laughs> <laughs> this is our symbol of America. This is crap. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't say it too loud. The Californians will come after you. <laughs> I, you know, I, I love... San Francisco, but I'm much more impressed by the Oakland Bridge, the Bay Bridge, which is what a lot of people say, honestly. Um, but the Golden Gate Bridge is such a symbol, and it's so short. Because when you and I drove across it, yeah. we tried to play... Well, we did play Sympathy for the Devil, and it didn't even finish the song. No. <laughs> Not even like, close. Yeah. It took us like a minute. I played the short version minutes. of the song. Yeah. <laughs> if you've seen um, if you've seen Interview with the Vampire, I was trying to recreate the end when Lestat is driving Daniel over the bridge. Yeah. And, and the tape we're... of Louis is playing and he tells him to <laughs> shut up and he turns on sympathy for the devil instead. I wanted to recreate that moment because hello, I'm a giant nerd. Yeah. But now we know there wouldn't have been time not even for close. him to do that. <laughs> he, Lestat would have had to turn around, go back over the bridge and then go back over the bridge again. Yeah. 
It's a beautiful bridge, but it's very small. Yeah. And then I saw the Mackinac for the first time, and I was like, you can do this? And it's not even the biggest bridge. I mean, no. they're bigger, more impressive bridges than that. Well, and then I went over the bridge that goes over Lake Poncho Train. Yeah, that's a long one. And I was like, we're going to die here. This is long. We're, if we get stuck, we're doomed. I highly suggest to people who haven't been over the Mackinac Bridge, don't be the one driving. Um, unless you are the kind of person who really needs to be in control of a situation. <laughs> Me, that's why I drove over the bridge. Yeah, my brother's like that too. Because he was in a car accident when he was a passenger and... Well, yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, that'll do it. I feel nervous driving over the bridge, and I've been over it several times because it's it's up there, and you could easily die. <laughs> yeah, um, you I mean, won't. Yeah, you you're technically like you can't easily die because no. there are things in place. But yes. I mean, you just feel so vulnerable when you're up there. I think you have more to worry about from the opposite side of the road than you do of yeah any of coming off of this bridge. Yeah, but it's you know I totally believe that. People probably died during construction, whether or not that was advertised. Or even um, since then. Yeah. We do have written down that says it's been used to commit suicide. And I totally believe that because it's a bridge. Yeah, it's a bridge. People are going to, like trains, people commit suicide. Yes. That is, if there is a way to do it, people will find a way. Oh, yeah. And and you will die. If you jump off that bridge, you will die. Like, if the fall doesn't get you, the straits will. The straits are one of the most dangerous seaways in the world. Yes. They'll get you. And it's a really long fall, so the fall probably got you. Yeah. Well, at least the belly flopping in water probably got you. So near the Adrian Trestle Bridge in Adrian, uh, a farmhouse once stood nearby, but tragically one night it was burned down. The farmer died trying to get his animals from the barn while the wife and son were killed by a train when they tried to flag one down to get help. Flagging down a train seems a, like a terrible idea. Yeah. I'm not sure how feasible that is, but I guess if you're in a panic... Who knows? Yeah. You might be just be like, oh my God, another person helped us out. Stop, stop. Yeah. Trains don't stop that fast. Nope. You would have had to try to stop that train about five miles down the road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a story. Again, it's a cute story. There's about three different versions. Um, I wrote a blog about it once. I should put that on our future Oh, we website. should link to that. Yeah. Um, there's about three different versions. They're all relatively the same, but nobody can quite agree on the details. And there's really no details to be found. No. Um, there might have been a farmhouse nearby. It's all private land at the moment, so. So, yeah. There, I mean, someone is living there now. They could have been living there before that. Yeah, but there's no <laughs> way for us to really check it out for ourselves unless we got permission. And I doubt somebody is. Yeah, I doubt. They've had problems with teenagers, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, people will go under the bridge and hang out and supposedly hear things, see things. Pretty typical pretty typical story yeah the bridge story this one and i have it in quotes so we're quoting somebody but i don't know who back in the 1800s a young lady got in a horse and buggy accident her buggy wheel went off the bridge and flipped she drowned in two feet of water on foggy summer nights you can see her hand come up over the road and hear her uh call for help oh that might be from the bridge book that's probably I from think... rich newman's yeah i'm pretty Haunted sure that's bridges rich books that's where i got a lot of these from oh yeah um and especially reading his book his book is not just michigan it's uh, i believe all of the united states i think so and some of these entries are just like a paragraph and they're, they read the same a lot of them just read the same yeah um a lot of a lot with children uh, either children dying or you hear children or you see children or usually you hear them you hear them laughing you hear them crying you hear them mm-hmm. playing sometimes they leave handprints on your cars this one's creepy because you see her the woman's hand come up on yeah. the bridge. Yeah, this one's a little unique, actually, like, in that respect. Call for help? And that's terrifying. Yeah, can you imagine just, like, hanging out on a bridge and then this, like, ghostly hand just suddenly comes up over the side? Like, like clawing at the side. That's you creepy. Just hear, like, help me. That's just, that image, like, gives me chills. It's a great ghost story. Oh, it really is. Yeah, I haven't investigated um, the history of that one just because I... I just think it's a story. Probably. I, <laughs> there's still a lot of these. I'm like, these are great spooky stories to tell around the campfire. <laughs> but I don't know. Somebody saw a hand. And, they and that seems like, a ghost. yeah, if someone saw a hand or what they saw was a hand coming up, it stands to reason, oh, somebody must have gone over the edge and died here. Yeah. There's your story. There's your ghost story. Right. What they saw. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they saw some kind of water monster. Yeah. We have a lot of monsters here. We have, we have here a lot of monster monsters. <laughs> 
That's true. Um, and then that, of course, is in Crawford. It is the Crawford Road Bridge. Every single bridge has some kind of legend. It's like bridges and cemeteries. They're going to be haunted. Yeah, pretty much. Especially in Michigan, I will say, for what people could be seeing at all of these bridges, because I don't think all of these bridges are haunted. Like, every single bridge in the state, I don't think they're all haunted. There's fog. Very often, we get, we're get we very misty kind of place. We are. It's spooky. Yeah, we're a very spooky state. So it could just be mist coming up, creating shapes, weird shadows. I don't know, foxes, birds. But we are a very spooky place. If you get up early in the morning and there's like the mist hovering around the ground. And, yeah. And it's all quiet, especially in the fall. It's wonderful. I love it. But it's spooky. It is spooky. Yeah. And it makes you wonder what's out there, especially in the days when it was, or if you just go up to the UP now, when it <laughs> when there yeah, wasn't when a lot there. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, because a lot of these are out in the country. A lot of these stories are old when there weren't a lot of people around. So, yeah. I want to I wanna read one more. It's White's Bridge. And then this is uh, Rich Newman again. The story goes that the woman was beguiling and working her ways with the villagers until they'd had enough of her. An angry mom descended upon her, dragged her to the bridge, and then hanged her there. <laughs> I just had to read that one. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of hanging mm-hmm. at bridges. I guess the convenient beams. I don't know. Lots of hangings happening in bridges and maybe hanging witches in cemeteries because that sounds like a thing to do. But bridges are a very popular location in America, especially. I mean, you do find it in other places, too. But, I mean, the most popular, most famous haunted bridge of all is Sleepy Hollow. A lot of these stories, it's immediately where my mind went. And that's an... I forget when was that published, but that's an old story. (laughs) That's a very old story. And it, it is quintessentially American. I love that story, by the way. That is a fantastic story. If someone hasn't read that, read it. It's oh, great. There is a article here called The True Story Behind the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. I'm going to click that. Ooh. There's so many ways you can read that story, too. There's a lot. My favorite being the animated one that's attached <laughs> to Mr. Toad. <laughs> <laughs> My second favorite being the little bit that's in Mr. Toad's Wild Ride at Disneyland. I always read it as, like, Katrina was in on it and she was, like, a snot. <laughs> I never read her as being like this innocent. Oh, she was really in love with him. No, I'm pretty sure she was in on it. Oh my god. So this article is from quickandloans.com. Hey, that's based in Detroit. <laughs> and it's the true legend. <laughs> like the true story behind Sleepy Hollow. From Quick and Loans. That is funny though, that it's a Detroit thing and the story is not it's not Michigan. Uh-uh. It could be. It is inspired from real life events that took place in and around Terrytown, New York. I had to remind myself that it was supposed to be the bridge that dissipated the Headless Horseman. And then that didn't happen. But yeah, a bridge was safety. Yes. Because if you cross running water, the paranormal cannot follow you. Supposedly. Supposedly. Except for the Headless Horseman. So watch out, folks. I mean, he was supposed, he does supposedly dissipate. But then he throws his head, his pumpkin head at you. Very famously in the the, um, Disney version, at least. Yes. And then it's the screepy, you know, it ends with the close up on the pumpkin head. That brought up to me. Okay. So, you know, traditionally running water stops things like vampires. Vampires traditionally cannot cross running water, which kind of extends to other paranormal entities. Running water meaning safety. Why would it be then that that bridges are so haunted? Is it because they like negate that? You've now made a, a safe way to cross over the running water. I don't know, because usually it was you cross the bridge to safety. Right. And for whatever yeah. reason, the thing chasing you can't cross. Can't get past That's the thing with that vampires. river. Supposedly yeah. vampires can't cross running water. Right. Or is it the bridge is the focal point because once you're on the other side of it, you're fine. Or they're trapped on the bridge because they're trapped by the water. Oh, I wonder if that's... They can't get to either side. They're stuck in the middle. And where did this legend come from anyway? I know this is a pretty common thing when you look at old, um, mostly European, I think, folklore. Yeah. Is this running water thing, but... I don't know where that comes from. And if I ever knew, just in all my vampire research, I have forgotten. Let's ask Rose. Yeah, she might know. <laughs> Rose Sinister um, Vampires. But yeah, that, that is a you. common thing because I would read it in the Ravenloft books. That oh. Features. Oh, okay. Yeah, by TSR. And the game as well. But I, I didn't play the game. I read the books. And that features in that. Oh, I didn't know that. And that was the first time I encountered it. So... It is clearly penetrated popular culture. Yeah. Not that Ravenloft is necessarily popular, but it is part of modern culture. I mean, 
mm-hmm. into modern fantasy as we know it culture. I thought it was just like something they had made up, and then I started encountering it in other folklore, and I was like, oh, I guess they got that from folklore. Cool. Yeah, that, that's... that means I can use it, and I have. <laughs> <laughs> running water means safety. Running water is also a portal to the underworld. Yes, that and that goes back. That's very far. Like the river sticks and stuff like that. In Greek mythology, certainly, and then probably Romans got it from them. And water features prominently in like Japanese mythology, like the Japanese islands coming out of the water. Okay. Water is sacred. And also you have the kappa, water demons. But it's fine. Just bow and then they lose all their power. It's great. Yeah. It's very polite. They also like cucumbers and human flesh. So but. the so the kappa minus the human flesh thing. So the kappa are just those cool deer on that one part of Japan where you can just bow and feed them things. Yeah. Sweet. Just feed them cucumbers and bow and they won't eat you. I'm pretty sure it goes the same for those deer too. <laughs> that could be. But yeah, you get a lot of that in across the world. Water is significant, which there is a significant amount of water in this world. There's a lot. So perhaps that's that's the reason hauntings are there is because they are techn- in what is technically like the path to the underworld. It's like a magnet. A lot of spiritual energy. That's where all the rest of the ghosts are going. <laughs> Not going down river. We'll have to look up. We'll have to do like haunted ponds and lakes. Oh, we can do a lot. Do you want to talk about Do you want to talk about lake monsters in the Great Lakes? Oh, there's so many. There's so many. There's so many cryptids in Michigan. Most of them surrounding water. Yeah. Well, we have a lot. Yeah, we're like fifty percent water. Doesn't surprise (laughs) me. There's a bunch of legends involving water in this state. Yeah. Oh no. Running water portals to the underworld. Bridges. Bridges and symbology often mean transition, crossing over. Yeah. And it makes me wonder if ghosts aren't stuck on them in that transition. They didn't quite make the transition, so yeah. they're stuck here. Because the, the woman with her ghostly hand coming over the side, yeah. she's stuck kind of underneath, it sounds like. She's stuck down there. She can't get to the bridge, really, or on the bridge or across the bridge. She's yeah. just stuck there. That's why she needs help. Help that woman. Grab that gross hand. No. No, no don't grab that <laughs> no. gross hand. You're going in the water with Someone her. Someone <laughs> else wants to do it. Go right ahead. No. I mean, it just means you're going in the water with her. If I see a spectral hand coming over the side of a bridge, I am running, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll fight it. Back. Ugh. Back, you slimy, gross hand. No. This is a lot of... And I I have seen some things, and I do the like the very serious... Like I don't get scared and run away. I think about it later and go, holy shit. Uh, right? <laughs> but I don't know. In that moment, I would probably my brain would be going, I know what I'm seeing. That can't be what I'm seeing. What is going on here? I'm the kind of person who would probably get eaten first. Oh, no, because you're too busy analyzing it when you should exactly. be running. Exactly. When it comes to fight or flight, I am very much fight. So I, too, am dead, my friend. <laughs> You'll jump in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit too much. I'm not quite. I'm not a ghost yeller. I'm not quite Baggins level, but I'm a little bit yeah. Shane level where it's like, I'm not afraid of you. Yeah. I will fight you if I need to. <laughs> like And I just I don't <laughs> I'm just like, just leave me alone. <laughs> just just please I don't, stop. You can do your thing. Like don't touch me. That's the biggest thing. I don't and that's with like people too. Like I don't want people to like come up right. and touch me. I'm very jumpy. <laughs> yeah. So like you can talk. I'd rather you weren't visible. <laughs> I'd rather. I have my boundaries when I go into places. Yeah. Um, on the off chance I just want to be prepared just like don't fucking touch me right don't touch me yeah I would love to go go to some of these places and um, like what what could these people be seeing what could they be hearing I don't know I really don't know I don't know either I can't tell them they made it up no of course not I don't know and I've seen some and heard some really strange things that I can't explain but I know that I experienced them oh same here Um, yeah what's going on I don't know no, I don't know. And I would never tell somebody that their experience, I think we said this on the last podcast, yeah. but we would never tell somebody their experience isn't valid or they didn't actually see something. We just want to know what's really happening on these bridges. Like, why are so many yeah. haunted? So many things happening. And is it intelligent? Is it residual? Like, the hand reaching over seems at least somewhat intelligent because it is a person asking for help. Maybe, and Whereas... unless she was able to get that far. And, like, with all of these children or babies crying when there's nothing. I mean, there's absolutely nothing yeah. to support this. What is that? I don't know. Fairies? Oh, God. <laughs> or is there something in the construction of the bridge 
that would make a similar sound. I, I can't imagine what would make the sound of a baby crying. I don't know. All I can um, think is like birds and foxes. And foxes sound like a woman dying. Yeah, it's a weird... Uh, goats, too. Goats make really weird humanoid noises. Llamas. It's all llamas. Yeah, there are there are feral llamas in the northern northern part of the state, so... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy to know that. Oh, yeah. John Tenney has a great story about llamas. <laughs> I will have to <laughs> ask. Final thoughts? I feel pretty confident saying all of these stories are fake. As for the phenomenon behind it, I don't know. I, I wish I did. I wish I could say, ah, yes, Anna died here and now her poor soul is seen wandering. I don't know, because I just don't believe in that story. Like, I really, really wanted to. And I was like, what? They have journals? Yeah. No. Something. No, I don't. I think too much time has passed for the journals to be really credible. I mean, yeah. we're talking like 200 years at this point. Right. We're talking that it is claimed that the Paranormal Research Society found them in the late 1800s. And this is a story from the early 1800s. Yeah. So. And then didn't make them public until 1971. Yeah. So they find them, what, like 50 years after? Yeah. Something like that. You and know. then they don't actually make them public for another 70. Like, mm. you know, I don't I don't know the whole the whole timeline. It says that they turned them into police in 1971. Which, why would they turn them into the police? I don't know. That's weird. Cold cases? Know. I have no from cold cases from the eighteen hundreds. I have no idea. Yeah, no. I don't think I don't think <laughs> any cold case goes back that far, minus like Jack the Ripper killings. Like. Oh yeah, there, there are <laughs> probably a few, but this was not this. Yeah, this is unique. No, not this. What do you uh, think's going on? Ooh, uh, weird stuff. There's definitely something. I don't think it's gonna be the stories that are actually attached to these places, much like the Ada Witch. But you know. I don't discount all the maybe some of these bridges being haunted. Not all of them can yeah. be. I just don't think there's a lot. We went through maybe half the list. If yeah, if that there if, are if that a lot of them and a lot of them is just people who children, and that's it. That's the story. Yeah, or like or this bridge has been used to commit suicide. Well, no doubt it's a bridge. Yeah, it's a bridge. Sorry, we're not trying to sound like flippant about the suicide it's just if there no, is a bridge someone has thrown themselves off of it yeah for whatever is, reason this is human nature yeah. unfortunately unfortunately um, so stuff is happening on bridges that people can't explain and it's you know if you want to go on believing the legends that's i don't care that's fine with me yeah just don't hurt anybody with them and we're fine nah i'm gonna say especially the one the the legend about elias frisk are just not not true yeah then that is a gruesome gruesome story it's gross and it's yeah. sad and the family doesn't like it so please stop yeah the, i mean then and there are people today that are connected with that name and that's really unfortunate that's poor people <laughs> and it's a small community too it is <laughs> so like ev everybody knows the legend all these people are coming in from out of town and like it's your family i mean that's that'd be annoying that to me. stinks that would be annoying yeah all right. I don't really have a way to, uh, I don't have a formal way to end this because we've already introdu introduced ourselves in the podcast number one. You can still follow us on social media. You can. We have yeah, that now. Yay. Do. Is it just Haunted Mitten? It is because Twitter said it had to be less than 15 characters. Yay. Thanks, Twitter. <laughs> um, I think we said on the last podcast it would probably be Haunted Mitten podcast, but we can't do that. It's too long. So you can find us everywhere at haunted mitten and hopefully we will start having some i'm excited to do the instagram instagram is my favorite i'm excited for that one yeah that'll be fun i like i like the photos um so go find us there give us a follow share us with your friends and family and neighbors and co-workers and dogs dogs maybe dogs like it who knows yeah. your cats they probably won't sit here and listen to that but check us out my friend thanks for listening as always don't wander in any places you're not supposed to don't break any laws. And be safe. Be safe and happy haunting. <laughs>